on the whole numbers. Now, my format up here is in a, in a number generation because when I generate these, it, it puts it back into the general. So I'd kind of, so, well, let's keep it like that. We'll keep it like that. I'm just going to double click it down and boom, brings it on down. So what happened to this one? I end, oh, it's a negative, interesting, because it was a bell curve. So we had a negative number. Okay, so there we have it. Now, if I convert to feet, let's convert it to feet. And we're gonna say, okay, font crew, black, white, center. So feet would be inches divided by 12. That's how we do things over here in America. We use this weird, you divide it by 12, like 12, that's so sloppy. Like, why don't you use a unit of measure based on 10, you know, that would make sense. Whatever, whatever, this is how we do things. Home tab, number group, tell me, don't tell me, get the king of England over here trying to tell me that I have to, or we measure, actually we got our measurements from the king of, king, the king of England's foot, I think is how we, anyways, whatever, that's how it is. So I'm gonna close this up and then we're gonna say, all right, then, all right, let's make a skinny G, a skinny G, skinny, skinny G. And then we're going to say inches. Let's say, I'm going to say this is going to be equal the inches again, rounded, and then the feet. And I'll just copy the format painter this time. Home tab, clipboard, format painter. Boom. All right, let's make it, let's make the mean, mean. It's going to be equal to, we'll say average tab going on over to the inches and control shift down, taking the average of it. We can add some decimals, decimalizing it, home tab, number group, decimalize. And then we're going to say this is the feet equals average. Decimalize isn't a word, by the way, but I'm making it into a word. Control shift down. I think it will be a word once I have, uh, showing its utility in practice decimalized all right then we're going to say this is going to be standard deviation equals the standard deviation we're look we're moving to the sample this time so s not the population standard deviation of the sample tab i'm going to control shift down picking that up boom decimalize in that one home tab number decimalize so we could really recognize. You can't recognize how they really are unless you can see the decimals. You need to see the decimals. You need to get under the hood before you know who they really are. Home tab, number group, decimalize. Okay. Uh, so, so, so now when I compare these two, obviously I can look at the difference now, the difference. And I could say, all right, well, what if I was to like, look at these two this way, I could look at the difference in the mean and the difference in the standard deviation, but that doesn't tell me too much, right? Because home tab number group, because they're in different units. So it doesn't, that doesn't really help me. Uh, but I could compare like their Z scores. So that's one thing I can do. I can compare, uh, and, and that's how our correlation will basically work. Before we do that, however, let's first, let's first imagine that we're, we're gonna say, hey, that, this set of data looks like it might look, might look like a bell curve. Like if I select this data, I'm gonna go, hmm, is there a relationship with this data? If I select all this data, control backspace, and then go insert and make a histogram from it. Here's my histogram based on inches. So this is the inches histogram. And why is it not? When I type, you do something. That's how computers work, computer. Don't you start protesting on me. You know I was typing something. So, and if I do the same thing for the feet, control shift down, backspace control backspace and insert and then boom 
And then this is gonna be feet. Okay. So I can see there's kind of a relationship, right? I can say, yeah, those look kind of similar. Uh, but I can't really compare that center point, of course, because they're in different units. But it's like, okay, well, they both look similar. They both look like they conform possibly to a bell curve relationship. So maybe I would, maybe I'd compare the bell curve just to play with the bell curve before we get into the correlation here. And then, so I'll do that because that'll be fun. Muy divertido. Muy divertido. Okay, so this is going to be then. Let's say we'll take the standard deviation. Let's take four standard deviations. So if I'm going to do this bell curve thing, what I want to do is plot out the bell curve x for inches and then p of x and then we'll do the z as well and then we'll do the same thing for x for feet and then p of x and then we'll do the z for feet this will be the z for inches all right but i need to know how far i need to go where, where do i need to start at with my x's so I can say, we'll do the four standard deviations as we saw in a prior unit, because that'll encompass the vast, vast majority of the data. So I'm gonna say four standard deviations, and let's say that we go upper X and lower X. So I'm gonna put them, I'll keep the same headers here, inches and feet this time. So the upper X is gonna be equal to the mean plus the standard deviation times four. That's as high as we, that's as how, how far up we're gonna go and the lower, I, wait, I usually do the lower first, don't I? Let's do the lower, lower X and then the upper X. So let's be consistent if you would. Otherwise you confuse people times this. No, it's minus, minus this times four. Okay, so that makes sense. So we're taking the 16.29 times four standard deviations minus the center point, the mean. All right, so negative 30. And then this one is gonna be equal to uh, the upper, which is gonna be the center point of the mean plus the standard 